Hi, it's Holly with Holly Berry Designs, and today I thought I'd try my hand at a Dollar Tree transformation. So I picked up this lovely um, pumpkin at Dollar Tree. Uh, it's kind of got that plastic vibe to it, and of course it has the ever-present glitter that's on those things from the Dollar Tree. So I wanted to give it a little more of a farmhouse vibe, and this is also reversible so that it'll last a little longer into the season. So today we're going to need our pumpkin, a couple of SVGs, some acrylic paint, some chalk paint, and of course some vinyl. And then a Cricut machine, some brushes, a heat gun if you'd like, a sander, and some transfer tape. And then both the designs that we're going to use today are free if you've subscribed to Cricut Access. If not, they're only a couple bucks a piece. So I logged into Design Space and I went into images to find something that I liked. And so I started with just typing in Happy Halloween. I made sure that my filter was set to access images so that anything I found um, would be part of my subscription. And then I started to look through and almost immediately, most of the time I find something I like. And in this case, right on the top row, there's Happy Halloween. But it didn't have enough of what I wanted. And I know from experience that if you keep looking, Often you'll find the same image with something added or something missing um, that may be exactly what you had in mind when you started out. And sure enough, here's that same image with a beautiful little flourish underneath it, so I chose that. I imported it in, and um, then my next job was just to size it so that it would fit properly on my pumpkin. For this, I chose 9.5 inches. Um, for some reason it says 9.6, but yeah, close enough. And then I made sure that I that it was locked so that when I hit enter, it would keep the same um, proportions. And then I went back looking for my give thanks. Again, I made sure that um, I was still on access so that I wouldn't be paying for any of my images. And here's another example of, I really liked this give thanks, but I wanted a little something more to go with it. So I looked and almost right away I found something else. Now the Give Thanks has two different colors to it and I just want to cut it as a stencil. So I'm going to grab that Give Thanks and I'm going to weld it so that it all turns into one color. Just so happened it turned in brown and I want it to be black so I can cut it on the same stencil sheet as my Happy Halloween. Uh, now that I've changed the color, I'm going to go ahead and also size this to nine and a half inches so that it'll fit perfectly onto my pumpkin. And now I'm ready to cut it. So I'm just gonna hit make. Uh, when I get in here, it's almost always gonna default to two 12 by 12 mats. So I'm gonna change that to 12 by 24. And then I'm gonna space them out just a little bit because I wanna have a little bit of room around my vinyl so that my paint, I can go a little bit outside of the words and not mess up my pumpkin by going over the edge of the vinyl. Uh, so once I've spaced them out, I'm ready to cut and then I get to do my favorite part, which is seeing weeding. I don't know why. I think I'm a little crazy. Most people seem to hate weeding, but for me, it's therapeutic. I love seeing it kind of come to life and, I, and see what I'm going to be able to make. Um, I'm not going to lie. The leaves on this are pain in the butt. Uh, so do the top ones first because they're the ones that are really awful, and then the bottom one's nice and easy. And we're all set to go. So now we've got to get our pumpkin ready. Um, I like the little hooks that are on here. It's kind of got like a little shoestring that's split and you can just put it back together and slide it right through, which makes it real nice and easy for switching it around when you want to reverse the sign. So I'm going to take that off and um, obviously we're just going to keep this so we can use it later. And then I'm going to get rid of the little bow. And then next I'm going to pry off um, our little leaf. Now this was surprisingly well adhered. Um, it took a little bit of an effort. I had to be careful not to really mess up the leaf when I was taking it off because it just did not want to come off. Um, but after sliding a Cricut tool under there a couple times, I was able to get it to pop off and then it bent back into shape pretty easily because it's pretty thin. Um, and then I just needed to get the rest of my glue off of here. Now, I am not a fan of glitter on stuff like this, so um, I need to get the glitter off. The easiest way to get glitter off of a sign is going to be with my handy duty sander, sander. So I'm just going to go to town on this and sand off the glitter. Um, it comes off so easy and so fast if you have a sander. 
It's not that hard to do. If you don't have a sander, grab a piece of sandpaper. It'll take just a little bit longer, uh, but it's not that hard. It's not a very thick layer of glitter, so not too difficult. I also made sure um, when I was sanding this to go up and sand off the stem because that's painted on top of the orange of the pumpkin. So you could see um, the different layers if you were to paint over it. And I just didn't want to have that. And then um, I went along the sides because it seemed a little bit raised. And I just, again, wanted it to be smooth for my project. So I went along the edges, um, careful to lift it up as I did so that I didn't sand onto my table. Um, because I don't want to ruin the table on my work box. Um, these things always take forever to stop spinning when you're done. All right. Um, now that I've gotten that off of there, I'm going to go ahead and just paint it with white chalk paint. Um, I use Rust-Oleum chalk paint. I like it. I buy a little quart can and it lasts forever. Um, I use it constantly. I found when I was buying the little bottles that I was going through them like crazy. So I just went ahead and bought a quart. And as you can see, you know, as I'm painting this, when I go through the first layer, um, you can still see the orange underneath. So I took my heat gun and dried it off so that I could see really how, how thick my coverage was and where it really was showing through. And then I'll go ahead and do a second layer of paint here. And really all it took was two layers and you couldn't see any of the orange. It was completely covered up. Um, I really didn't need to dry it at this point because I'm gonna let it dry overnight. The only reason that I'm using my heat gun to dry this second coat is so that I can turn it over and paint on the back because like I said earlier, this is going to be a reversible sign. So um, now I'm gonna take the back side and um, I'm gonna use my chalk paint as a primer uh, because this surface um, does, acrylic paint doesn't adhere all that well to. Um, so I just went ahead and painted it white again, and now I'm actually going to paint this side orange because this is going to be my Halloween side. And I'm just using, um, craft store, you know, 50 cents a bottle acrylic paint here. Um, this does need two coats to really, you know, have a solid, uh, coverage, but because I did paint the, uh, chalk paint first, it adhered really well. And I'm going to let this cure overnight. So it's been a day and now I just want to kind of distress this a little bit and give it that farmhouse look. So I'm dry brushing around the edges. Um, so I'm just kind of wiping the paint onto my craft paper first and then doing it around the edges. I always start at the edges and work in. Um, normally I usually end up with about three different brushes out while I'm doing this because it's just where on each project, how am I getting the coverage that I like or the thickness of the brush or the brush strokes. Uh, so I just go back and forth between the different uh, brushes to get the effect that I'm looking for. But I always start around the edges. Um, kind of right now giving it kind of that worn kind of farmhouse look to start with. And then after I've really got this going, then I'll go back in and give some definition to the pumpkin and actually um, give it more of a 3D feel to it. And I try really hard to make sure that I'm always wiping um, the paint brush off on the craft paper prior to going in there. And you can see this particular brush, I like it because it is really light coverage. It's just giving it some shadow. And 
don't worry about it being too light. You can go over it. Um, it's hard to undo too much paint. And so I always start um, out really light and then I go back in and continue to add definition. So I went ahead and just um, put my stencil on here. And when I do the Halloween, I'll show you that one as I'm putting it on. I always start with the color that is underneath the stencil. So in this case, I'm using my white chalk paint again. Uh, the reason for that is simply so that if there's any bleeding, now we're gonna be in a situation where um, what bleeds through is white. And I'll go through and put this through. And then the big thing is, is to give it a little bit of time to dry off when it's done before we start to put the black on. Otherwise we end up with um, more of a gray and I really want that black farmhouse look. Again, um, getting any excess paint off of my brush because even though I put the white on, I still want to avoid any bleeding that I can. Um, and you'll notice I'm going up and down with the paintbrush. When I speed it up so you don't have to be bored while I'm doing all of this, it may look like I'm going back and forth a little bit, but I'm not. It's just the speed of the video. Um, so I'm always going up and down versus back and forth on the, can um, the pumpkin so that there's less likelihood of it bleeding through. got two coats on. I'm going to take it off. I'm not going to wait for it to dry. Um, I usually pull mine off when it's still pretty wet. Um, it seems to come off a little bit easier and you don't have to worry about pulling part of your design off if you pull it off while it's still wet. Now one of the things that's really care important when you're pulling it off when it's wet is to make sure that the front of the stencil doesn't then touch the project that you're working on. So you'll notice here that I'm being very careful not to touch the project with any of my fingers that have touched the front side and have wet paint on them. And I'm also making sure that I keep pulling it away and that that stencil that has wet paint on the front of it is never touching um, the project again. And now comes the fun part, pulling all the little tiny pieces out of there. Um, the little tiny pieces in that leaf on top are a pain in the butt to pull out, but it's so worth it once you pull out everything. And then there was a couple of little tiny issues um, where I wasn't as careful as I thought when I was pulling it off and I got a tiny bit of the paint from the stencil on there. So I just grabbed a white brush, or brush and some white paint and touched it up. But overall, I think it turned out really nice. So now it's time for the back side. I didn't like how shiny it was with the acrylic paint. We had the chalk paint on the front and I just regular, did regular acrylic orange paint on the back. And so I just took a sanding block 
and sanded it down a little bit today just a little bit of the gloss off of it you just want to be careful that you don't sand too far and sand off your color um, so like i said before i'm going to show you um, how i put the stencil on um, before i do so i'm going to paint the stem and on the front side i was really careful about how the stem looked and kind of tried to make it fancy and everything and then i realized when i was all done with it that i'm gonna put um a bow on that and it's going to cover it up and so i want it to be fairly neat but i didn't get as worked up about it on the back side because i had realized that there was no point so now i'm going to do the same thing again i'm going to go through and i'm just going to dry brush my pumpkin I was a little more generous with my paint on this side, did a little more layers, didn't get my brush quite as dry because I was painting on top of a color. Um, but you still wanna be careful with how much paint. Again, you can always go back and add more in. It's a pain in the butt to try and get paint off if you get too much in there. Um, but I really, really like how the pumpkin on this side turned out, um, put a lot um, a lot more brown on this side and kind of made a little more definition than I did on the front side. And I think it turned out really good. So I went ahead and put my stencil on here. Now, one thing that I do is I reuse my transfer tape over and over. I'll usually get about four or five uses. So this is the same piece of transfer tape that I had on the front side. And it helps it pull off a little bit easier. Just go slowly as you're pulling it off. And from time to time, you'll have things like, look at the A, the middle of the A and the middle of the P's as I'm pulling them off. You'll notice that I kind of had to go back and, you know, I just went back and re-pushed them down as they were coming through. You see that kind of section there that just kind of came up. And as long as you have a little bit of patience, it's a pretty quick process. You can see this only takes a very short amount of time to pull it off. And uh, again, I will reuse this transfer tape for another project. I do use the Cricut transfer tape because it seems to work better. And if you use it over and over versus a cheaper version that you can only use once, I think it actually ends up costing you less. And Cricut runs sales all the time. If you just watch for it, you can get their transfer tape really cheap. And especially if you have Cricut access, you get a discount on that as well. So again, just like before, I'm gonna take my orange paint and I'm gonna go ahead and um, paint across there. Um, I noticed that a couple things weren't down quite as far as I wanted them to be. And even though I am doing that orange layer first, if I notice something, I'm going to just go ahead and smooth it out a little bit so that I get a better, cleaner stencil. So I'm going to go through here and paint everything orange. And then when I'm done with the orange, I'll go back through and do the black. Now, when I was putting the video together, somehow I wasn't recording when I did the black, so I apologize. I do not have the black paint or the reveal of pulling it off which is disappointing to me because that's my favorite part. Now that both sides are completely done uh, with the painting, it's time to add our little leaf back on. I just slapped some uh, glue on the back with my handy duty glue gun. And um, if you recall, this was hard to get off, so I'm pretty sure that it's gonna stay on really well once it's back on here as well. And then I didn't like the little raffia bow that came with it. So I decided I wanted something that had a little more depth to it. Um, apparently I was having some serious issues with recording this day because I did not show you on camera how I made this bow. However, when I flip it over and do the one for the other side, I will show you. So I just made a simple um, little jute twine bow. Um, you can buy a roll of this at the Dollar Tree. Um, I always have several rolls of this laying around because it works for everything. And making a little bow is so easy and so quick. Um, and it just puts a little extra something on projects when I use it this way. So 
So now that I like what that looks like, let's flip it over and we'll do the other side. And I made sure when I made this bow to and put it on that I put it so that it matched the other side so that if I saw it, I, need, I wouldn't see what was coming from the other side when I reversed it. So super easy to make this bow. Just wrap it around your finger several times till it's as thick as you want it to be. Then just take your twine, wrap it several times around the middle and add a little hot glue to where your um, two pieces of twine that are going around the middle meet up. Pretty simple. And then just press that baby down where you want it to be. And like I said, I wanted to make sure that this matched up to the bow on the other side so that anything that I saw or that would show from the back would be covered up by the bow on each side. So, looks pretty good. Next thing I did was take that um, little piece of twine that I had saved from the very beginning and pop it back in. I love this because it has kind of the little shoestring ends on it, so you can pop it in and out, and when you switch it around, um, it won't look like it's on the back side. You can just switch it back around. Um, so, holds it up nice. And like I said, you just take those and switch them around to the other side, and it'll look great. So hopefully you like this and you can see that the old plasticky looking Dollar Tree pumpkin now has much more of a farmhouse vibe. Plus it's dual purpose. It runs from Halloween clear into Thanksgiving. As always, if you like this, don't forget to subscribe. Have a great day.